Bonjour à tous. Today we continue our Delft preparation videos. In this lesson, we will work on the Delft B1 reading exam. If you want to rewatch our previous video, you can find the link at the end of this video so you can get access to it easily. As you know, I will take the exam with you and explain to you how I would answer it. Also, if you want me to prepare you for the DELF exams, you can get in touch with us via our website. You can be our VIP member so we will know you better and start working together. Because don't forget, our goal is not only to make you pass the DELF exams, but also to make you speak and understand French that we speak every day in France. Many people take French classes, but what about the quality? Too many courses teach the French language wrong, and it's a shame. They make you pay for something that is not worth your money. It's a waste of your money, your time, and your honor as well. What a pity. And when you want to remember what you have learned, imagine taking a class, feeling good, feel that you are progressing, but after six months, you forget everything and you want to take that class again. And guess what happens? You have to pay again. So you feel bad because you already took that class. With us, you will not have this problem. With only one payment, you will have a lifetime access to a product that you choose. You can learn everything in one week or in one month or even in one year or even more. We'll always be here to help you and as you know, we've built this program and we are proud of it. But now, let's start today's lessons and I will see you at the end of the class. Bonjour à tous. Welcome to French with Love Delft B1 preparation video. Today, we will do the second part together, the part called Compréhension des écrits. As always, I will pretend that I take the exam and I will explain to you how to get the maximum of points for each exercise. So, even if you think that this exam is difficult, please stay till the end because you will learn a lot of new words with us. And you will see that with the correct techniques, the reading exam will be easier to understand and you will be successful too. So, never give up and for any questions, you can contact us on the comment section if you want below this video or you can reach our website and send an email to us. But for now, uh, prepare your notebook or your word book and take your favorite pen with you and if you want to print the exam, like if you want to have this paper with you, uh, you can just click the link that is in the description or you can come to our website um, to download not only this paper, but to have all the materials that you need to be successful in DELF exam and more. I say more because you can become one of our VIP members and not only you will be trained for this kind of DELF exam, but also you will be ready to understand and to speak like the French that we speak every day outside. Okay, so uh, after this short introduction, Let's start with exercise 1. Okay, so let's have a look to the exam first. As you can see, there are three exercises and it looks like that it's pretty long actually. So you will get uh, 45 minutes to do all the exercise, but actually since part 2 and part 3 are linked, you will get one hour and a half to do both exercises. By the way, don't forget to bring a watch for the exam. It's not mandatory, but it's just an advice. Also, if you will pass DELF B1 exam soon, it will be very helpful for everybody if you can share your experience with us. You can talk about the kind of exercises that you get and how you felt about the exam in general. Since it's just an exam and not a competition, uh, we really want to help everybody to succeed. So, there is three exercise and of course you can start by the one that you want. You can start to do the second exercise if it, you think that it will be easier for you or the third, extra. but since it's a preparation video, we will start with the first exercise. And as always, uh, first we read the instruction, then the questions and the answers given. And whenever you see a keyword, 
we will underline it. So let's go. The first exercise is out of eight points and we get 0 0.5 points per every correct answer. Okay. Don't forget, you only need 50 points to get this exam, to get the, the Delft B1 diploma. So every point, every grade matters. Also, you don't get negative points, don't forget that. I mean, if your answer is wrong, then uh, they don't withdraw pro a point from you, from your score. So give an answer to every question, even if you are not sure. Don't leave blank. So let's read the instruction. Hello, uh, and we will of course see and check all the keywords that will help us to understand this exercise. Vous travaillez à Lyon, were you working in Lyon, okay, in Lyon. Vous devez organiser un repas d'affaires, so it's a business meal avec des clients étrangers, with, uh, with foreign clients, okay. Vous devez, devez comes from devoir, which means we must, we have to. Okay, uh, then, uh, okay, so, vous cherchez un restaurant qui correspond à vos critères, cuisine de la région de Lyon. Certains de vos clients ne mangent ni poisson, ni viande, nombre calme, service de qualité. Vous comparez ces annonces, pour chaque annonce, cochez si, oui, si cela correspond aux critères, ou non, si cela ne correspond pas. Okay, so look, we already understood that it's a formal dinner, so it's not a dinner with friends. That's very important. And here the keywords are vous cherchez, so we are looking for. And uh, we have some criteria that we must uh, respect in order to choose the restaurant that uh, we want to have dinner there with our clients. So Cuisine de la Région de Lyon, what does it mean? It means that the food should be local, have to be actually, not should, must be local. Um, look, we have ni, ni, remember the first season, ni, ni, conjunction de coordination. So we don't want uh, fish and we don't want meat because some of our clients don't eat them. Okay. Endroit calme, calme is like in English, it's a calm place, easy place, cozy place. Service de qualité means uh, quality service and nice waiters. Okay, and that's it. You see, we just have to read every text and tell if they agree with our criteria or not. So, your chance to succeed in this exercise is 50% actually. And look, the criteria are already written next to each text. And they are the same for the four plays. I think that it's a good exercise to gain point quickly. So let's start with the first text and we keep our criteria in mind. Actually they are written so it will be easy and we will tick yes or no progressively. So let's start. Depuis la salle panoramique de ce restaurant, la vue sur la ville de Lyon est magnifique. C'est le cadre idéal pour un dîner romantique mais c'est aussi un endroit tranquille pour les repas d'affaires, you see? Repas d'affaires, business, uh, business dinner, and endroit tranquille. The keyword here is tranquille, which is a synonym of calm. So, endroit calme, mieux calme, we check, yes. Le calme, mieux calme, c'est oui. We continue. La cuisine est classique et à base de produits régionaux. And we stop here, because produits régionaux est à base de, uh, so it means it's, it's local, the food. Um, is made with uh, local product. So cuisine régional, we check, yes. Let's continue. Le, me le menu tout légumes uh, est très apprécié des personnes qui ne mangent ni viande ni poisson. So they directly give us the answer here. So uh, the menu or vegetable boards est très apprécié, is very appreciated for people who doesn't eat uh, meat nor fish. So. Menu sans viande ni poisson, we check yes. And uh, yeah, we continue. Le menu tradition permet de goûter d'excellents produits comme la truite saumonée, le gâteau de légumes ou les desserts au chocolat. Les serveurs sont mal organisés. Mal, you remember, we, we saw it in the previous part. Mal organisé, c'est dommage. What a pity. So, service de qualité, it's no.
Ok, so let's move to the second text, le bonheur dans l'assiette. Dans cet établissement bien connu du centre de Lyon, on nous propose une cuisine gourmande pour un excellent rapport qualité-prix. C'est une très bonne adresse pour les amateurs de viande et de charcuterie. Si vous ne mangez que des légumes, ce restaurant n'est pas pour vous. So we stop here, because if you eat only vegetables, this uh, restaurant is not for you. So they don't have a menu sans viande, ni poisson, we check. No. Euh, le chef de cuisine, le chef, pardon, le chef cuisine des spécialités de la région lyonnaise avec des produits de saison. So, spécialités de la région lyonnaise. So, cuisine régionale, we check. Yes. On passe un agréable moment dans ce restaurant, même si l'ambiance animée est un peu trop bruyante. Bruyante it comes from bruit, which means noise. So, it's a noisy place. So it's not a calm place, so lieu calme ou check non, non, we can say both. Un lieu plutôt réservé aux repas en famille ou entre amis, les serveurs sont sympas et très intentionnés. Sympa means nice and attentionnés means you know they care about customers, so service de qualité, we check yes. And now we are finished, we can go to the third one. I check my note as well in order to not forget anything. Uh, so we go fast, but if you don't understand the word, the sentence, and if you need more explanation about a topic, please feel free to contact us. So, le lion exotique. La cuisine proposée par Luis, un jeune cuisinier brésilien, est authentique et 100% faite maison. Deux types de plats sont proposés. Des plats typiques de lion. So, Cuisine régionale, we check yes, because it's typique, which means typical. Et des plats de son pays d'origine. Au menu, saucisson lyonnais, mais aussi gratin de patates douces ou plats de légumes colorés. So, even if you don't know what a gratin uh, is, you read plat de légumes, which means a plate of vegetables. So, there are no fish nor meat, so we can say menu sans viande ni poisson, we check yes. Um, ok, so let's go. En salle, les serveurs sont souriants mais peu efficaces. So we stop here because, ok, they smile but they are not so much efficient. So we don't expect a quality service. So we check no. And uh, let's continue. Si le soleil de Rio arrive jusqu'à Lyon, vous pourrez déguster votre repas en terrasse en écoutant de la samba, un lieu un peu trop bruyant. So we stop here. Bruyant, again, noisy. Le calme, we check, no. Surtout en fin de semaine. And it's done. Uh, let's not lose time and start to read the other text. Le piano. Les deux jeunes cuisiniers du piano travaillent exclusivement avec des produits frais. Vous pourrez découvrir leur cuisine gourmande et naturelle à travers les meilleures recettes lyonnaises. Les meilleures recettes, recette means... Uh, recipe, so it's the best food recipe from Lyon. Uh, so cuisine régionale, we check yes. Le menu est imaginé chaque jour en fonction de ce que les chefs que ce de ce que les chefs trouvent au marché de Lyon. Ils vous feront goûter par exemple du boudin noir aux pommes ou la célèbre saucisse de Lyon. Il n'y a cependant pas de plat de légumes à la carte. So we stop here, and uh, since there is no vegetable, they don't have a menu without meat or fish, so we check no. Uh, ok, uh, where were we? Le service est très professionnel, les serveurs savent qu'on sait les clients, which is a good point, so it's a service de qualité, we check oui. And uh, let's continue. Le restaurant possède un petit salon calme pour les réunions et les dîners privés. So, un salon calme, we have those words. Et les dîners privés can be for business dinner as well. So, lieu calme, we check yes. And the first exercise is already finished, actually. So, you saw how we did. We read, we read the question and give answer whenever we notice the information that we need to know. Be careful to not answer the question by their order for that kind of exercise. What I mean is that don't try to find out is if uh, the specialties are local or not, then try to find if 
they have a menu sans viande ni poisson, etc. So keep reading the text and whenever you see a criteria, just check the box. For more examples and more DELF exam, you can visit our website. And if you become our VIP members, not only you will have access to all our full materials, but also you will learn to speak French as we do in France. With us, not only you will learn the French language, but we will present you as well the French culture, history and literature. Many surprises will come, so stay tuned for every of our video. Don't forget to subscribe. Because learning French with love is magnifique. Like the exercise 2. Okay, now let's start the exercise 2. And as you can see, it will be a little longer. We can earn 8 points from it. And uh, there are only 7 questions. And it's all QCM. Question à choix multiple. You will see this word a lot, actually. So you can take note of it. QCM. Okay, so now before reading that article, uh, I would like to read the question in order to have an idea on what this article is about and what the jury is expecting from us. And also it will help us to better focus on the article. Um, so you have grab your pen and uh, anytime you, you think that the keyword will help you to, to answer it correctly, just underline the word. Selon Barbara Abdelia Bauer, so this is an important name, we will hear it. Vers 3 ans, les enfants bilingues ont tendance à mélanger les deux langues, apprennent plus rapidement des mots dans les deux langues, procèdent autant de vocabulaire que les enfants monolingues. En Irlande, le fils de Johanna a besoin de temps pour communiquer en anglais avec sa famille, vrai ou faux. Johanna parle plus long, naturellement l'anglais quand elle est en colère contre son fils, vrai ou faux. Les filles d'Ibsen, euh, c'est un prénom danois. Utilise le danois quand elles discutent en famille, jouent avec leurs amis, chantent avec leur père. On va voir tout ça. 5. Au quotidien, il est facile et naturel pour Ibsen de parler danois à ses filles. Vrai ou faux Certaines personnes pensent que les, que les enfants bilingues apprennent moins vite, ont de moins bons résultats, communiquent moins facilement à l'école. Encore une fois, numéro 7. Barbara Abdelila Bauer regrette que l'enseignement des langues soit peu varié. La société donne trop d'importance à l'anglais. Les enfants bilingues soient aussi peu accompagnés. Ok, now we starting, we are starting to understand what the article will be about. So, let's read the text. Now you can grab your pen and underline every word or sentence that you think that will help us to answer this exam. After the first reading, it will help us to better locate the keywords and not lose time to find them again. So you will understand what I mean in a minute. Ok, so, parler de langue est-il un atout un, ou un handicap pour les enfants En France, un enfant sur cinq naît dans un foyer bilingue. Il n'y a pas beaucoup de différence dans les développements du langage entre un enfant bilingue et un enfant monolingue. À 24 mois, les enfants connaissent une cinquantaine de mots souligne Barbara Abdelila Bauer, linguiste. Pour les enfants bilingues, ces mots sont partagés entre les deux langues. Cette situation pourrait laisser croire qu'il y a un retard dans l'apprentissage d'une des deux langues, mais quand on étudie le vocabulaire des enfants bilingues et monolingues à 3 ans, on trouve le même nombre de mots en moyenne. Chaque famille a sa propre expérience du bilinguisme. Ainsi, Johanna, qui est irlandaise et qui vit à Nantes, témoigne. En France, si je parle anglais à mon fils, Mathias, il me répond plutôt en français. Ce n'est qu'en Irlande, là où vit ma famille, et au bout de quelques semaines, qu'il fait des phrases en anglais. Lorsqu'il m'arrive de me fâcher, lorsqu'il m'arrive de me fâcher contre mon fils, j'utilise, j'utilise spontanément ma langue maternelle. Je regrette tout de suite après car j'ai peur qu'il associe la langue anglaise à quelque chose de désagréable. Ibsen. Ibsen est danois. Pour lui, parler sa langue maternelle avec ses filles, c'est surtout transmettre quelque chose de la culture danoise. Je leur apprends des chansons, des chansons en danois, et elles regardent aussi des bandes dessinées en danois. Mais dans leur vie quotidienne, comme à l'école ou avec leurs copains, c'est clair. C'est le français qui l'emporte. Ce n'est vraiment pas simple de transmettre sa langue lorsqu'on n'est pas dans son pays d'origine. Barbara Abdelila Bauer évêque, évoque un autre point. Encore aujourd'hui, certains pensent qu'un enfant élevé dans deux langues différentes réussit moins bien à l'école. 
réussi moins bien à l'école. Ce qui est faux, ce qui est faux. Euh, de plus, les langues n'ont pas la même image dans la société, n'ont pas la même image dans la société. Malheureusement, on voit souvent la capacité à parler anglais, la capacité à parler anglais comme une force. Mais pas forcément d'autres langues. Regrette, regrette, Barbara Abelia Bauer. Je reçois par exemple des couples franco-espagnols qui n'ont qu'une envie que leur enfant apprenne l'anglais. Okay, so now you see, uh, you see easily the words that we underline pop up, right? What I mean is that it will be easier for us to, to come back to the text with the key words that are in the question. So our eyes will directly focus on them easily. Okay, so uh, let's see the question again and let's start to answer them. Selon Barbara Abdelila Bauer, um, so yes, we underline our name. Vers trois ans, trois ans is something that we saw. Look, à trois ans, it's here, à trois ans. A and there are uh, synonyms actually in this context because they don't give any more details. So à trois ans, vers trois ans, it's the same thing. And look at this sentence. On trouve le même nombre de mots en moyenne. En moyenne means on average. So the answer A and B are in incorrect. Posséder means to possess. Autant de means as many as. So and the synonym of as many as is le même nombre, the same number, the same amount of Word actually. So, possède autant de vocabulaire que les enfants monolingues. C is the correct answer. En Irlande, le fils de Johanna a besoin de temps pour communiquer en anglais avec elle. We already underlined Johanna's name, so uh, we found it easily. And look, it says au bout de quelques semaines. So, it does not happen quickly. Au bout de it means at the end of. So, yes, they do need time actually. So, it's vrai. Third question. Joanne parle plus naturellement l'anglais quand elle est en colère contre son fils. Colère is a negative word and the synonym of it is se fâcher, which means to get angry, to, to be upset. And we find it here. J'utilise spontanément ma langue maternelle. Langue maternelle means mauvais tongue or the native language if you prefer. And since Joanna is Irish, her mauvais tongue is English. So, c'est vrai. Quatrième question. We are talking about Ibsen and his daughter. Utiliser means to use. So what they use? Quand elle, when they use. So the question is when do they use the Danish? And uh, Ibsen is here. And listen. Je leur apprends des chansons en danois. So here he doesn't talk about family nor friends. And chanter means sings. And chanson means song. So the correct answer is C. Here is the fifth question. The key word is quotidien. Au quotidien, il est facile et naturel pour Ibsen de parler danois à ses filles. Uh, okay, and so we are still talking about Ibsen. And look, what is it written here? Ce n'est vraiment pas si simple. So it's really not easy. Il est facile. It means it's Easy. Facile is the synonym of simple. So we check faux. C'est pas facile. Question numéro 6. The key word is certaines personnes. Certaines personnes pensent que les enfants bilingues. What do they think about them? The key word is center. Certaines personnes. And uh, we saw it. We saw it. Here. Certains. Certains pensent. And we have also école. Il réussit moins bien. Ok, well, did you notice one good thing about this exercise is that the questions are in the correct order. It goes from the top to the bottom. So, uh, and this is why we can find the keywords easily. So we have école here, réussit moins bien here. And uh, après moins vite, is incorrect because you know there is no link with speed. Communique is communicate and uh, or to talk, 
more facilement they don't talk about it, they just talk about results actually, because ils réussissent moins bien. So if they don't success too much, if s'ils si réussissent moins bien, bah, ça veut dire qu'ils ont des mauvais résultats. Donc ils ont de moins bons résultats à l'école. Donc la réponse est B. Et la dernière question, nous voici à la dernière question. Here is the last question. So, update again this woman, Barbara. Regret, regret is a key word. And it means to regret. It's an easy one. Um, but here actually, yeah, we can translate it as like if only. I regret that, if only that, etc. And look, we find re regretter here. Regret Barbara Abdelia Bauer. So let's read this sentence. Malheureusement, on reçoit la capacité à parler anglais comme une force. So speaking English is very important. So she's talking about l'anglais and yes, yeah, society gives too much importance to English. So the correct answer is B. And it's done. We get A point from this exercise. C'est super. Okay, so we are doing these exercises together and I am aware that I spoiled them actually. But if you want to train alone and to have other example, we have plenty of exam samples on our website. And uh, if you become one of our VIP members, we will help you to, to be prepared for this kind of exam actually. So, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact us. But for now, let's move to the third exercise. So, here is exercise 3. It looks like the exercise 2, actually. But in this one, we can get 9 points if we do it correctly. So, it's an article from a magazine. Vous lisez cet article dans un magazine. And we will have to answer seven questions again. Okay, so let's dive in and let's start to read the question and answer. En Europe, les réservations dans les hôtels ont fortement augmenté. C'est vrai, c'est faux. À Barcelone, les habitants quittent le centre-ville car les logements sont trop chers, petits, bruyants. Yolande trouve que les locations saisonnières donnent une mauvaise image de la ville, ne lui rapporte pas suffisamment d'argent, provoque trop de passages dans son immeuble. Pour quelle raison Yolande est elle en colère Parce que les touristes ne la saluent pas. Les dépenses de l'immeuble ont augmenté. La mairie autorise trop de locations saisonnières. D'après le site internet de locations saisonnières, les difficultés à se loger en centre-ville ne sont pas nouvelles. Vrai, faux. Les habitants des centres-villes regrettent l'absence de solidarité des voisins, le manque d'éducation des touristes, la disparition des commerces de proximité. En séjournant dans les centres-villes, les touristes ont accès à une vie de quartier traditionnel. Est-ce que c'est vrai Est-ce que c'est faux Ok, so I think that we understood what the article will talk about. Now, let's read the text. And of course, we will underline all the keywords that will, uh, we think that will help us to answer all questions. So let's start reading. I will read it out loud. So it will be an extra exercise for you too. You will listen my voice and you will read the article in the same time. Let's go. C'est un fait inquiétant qu'on constate dans toutes les capitales européennes. Les touristes séjournent de plus en plus dans des appartements loués sur des sites internet. Laurent Lopez, directeur d'hôtel, est directement concerné. Notre chiffre d'affaires baisse de 10%, baisse de 10% chaque année depuis 3 ans. En parallèle, ce nouveau mode d'hébergement a provoqué une augmentation du prix du mètre carré. Ainsi, à Barcelone, le quartier historique se vide peu à peu de ses habitants qui, pour des raisons économiques, préfèrent déménager en banlieue. Aujourd'hui, le quartier ne compte plus que 15 624 résidents à l'année, alors qu'ils étaient 27 470 en 2006. Par ailleurs, Yolande, Yolande, qui habite à Paris, nous explique que son quotidien est devenu très difficile en raison, de, en raison des locations saisonnières. Les arrivées et départs à n'importe quelle heure de la journée, les fêtes toute la nuit, les groupes de touristes qui envahissent le hall de l'immeuble avec leurs valises, on ne se sent plus chez soi. Nous ne voulions pas d'ascenseur, 
mais un voisin qui loue son appartement en voulait absolument un pour attirer les touristes. Ça nous a donc coûté de l'argent, s'énerve, s'énerve-t-elle. J'ai été me plaindre à la mairie, mais ça n'a servi à rien. Le marché de la location saisonnière peut rapporter beaucoup d'argent, en moyenne 350 euros supplémentaires par mois pour les propriétaires de logements loués sur les sites internet de location saisonnière à Amsterdam. Dans cette ville, tout comme à Paris et Londres, les autorités ont déjà décidé de mettre en place des règles pour limiter la durée de location. Les sites internet de location saisonnière protestent et affirment que les problèmes de logement existaient déjà avant leur arrivée. Ok, I remember this one. This question. Pour les habitants des quartiers historiques, la vie n'est plus la même. Les rues pleines de touristes perdent peu à peu leurs magasins de quartier. Magasins de quartier. Fini les boutiques d'autrefois. Adieu les voisins qu'on connaît bien. Maintenant, les rues se remplissent de restaurants chics, de boutiques de souvenirs et de valises à roulettes. Ok, so let's start to answer the question. Question 1. Honorables réservations dont les hôtels ont fortement augmenté. So the keywords are fortement and augmenté. Fortement, strongly. Augmenté means increase. So, is it true? Is it false? Uh, we talk about auto hotel uh, reservation and I remember that they ask a question to an hotel, uh, to an hotel uh, director. Look, it's here. What we read, notre chiffre d'affaires a baissé de 10%. Le directeur d'hôtel, it's the director who said that. Notre chiffre d'affaires a baissé de 10%. What does chiffre d'affaires mean? Chiffre d'affaires means sales revenues. Sales revenue. And the BC means decrease. So they are losing money because people don't make a reservation too much. So the answer is faux. Deuxième question. À Barcelone. Barcelone, yeah, we saw it too. Les habitants quittent le centre-ville car les logements sont trop. Uh, les habitants means inhabitants and, quartier, and uh, quitter means to leave. Centre-ville means the city center and logement means uh, home, accommodation, etc. So, Barcelone, where is Barcelone? Barcelone is here. So, we'll have the answer. Like, quartier historique, ça dit peu à peu, de ces habitants qui, pour des raisons économiques. So, uh, ça dit peu à peu means to get empty. Peu à peu, little by little. Why? Pour des raisons économiques. So, it means that it's expensive, actually, for economical reasons. So, the correct answer is A. Here is the third question. Yolande trouve que les locations saisonnières. Um, so we will talk about Yolande. And the uh, keyword is, is trouve que. So we asking the uh, we asking Yolande's opinion here. So Yolande is here. Yolande is here. Qui habite à Paris? Up. So, uh, wait a minute. Okay, so she's talking about les groupes de touristes qui envahissent le hall de l'immeuble. So, les arrivées de départ à n'importe quelle heure de la journée, les fêtes toute la nuit, les groupes qui envahissent le hall de l'immeuble avec on ne se sent plus chez soi. So, it means that the hall where she lives is always crowded. And, um, you know, if you are not sure, Well, she doesn't talk about money. Rapporter de l'argent means uh, to earn money. And she doesn't talk about the city as well. So the only uh, correct answer is C. Yes, when you are not sure about one question, you can eliminate the two others. So, you know, for um, accuracy, actually. So, quatrième question. Pour quelle raison Yolande est-elle en colère Colère is a negative word. Parce que les touristes de la Seine pas les dépenses de l'Europe, les mairies. Ok, so what does she talk about here? S'énerve-t-elle? It's here, look. It's a synonym of colère. S'énerver, it's to get upset. And why she is upset? Because she said that ça nous a donc coûté de l'argent. It cost money. Because she's talking about the new elevator and it costs money, so... Uh, it's not les touristes ne la saluent pas, les dépenses, les dépenses, la mairie autorise. Ok, so it's B. Les dépenses, the expense of uh, where she lives has increased, have increased, because there is not only one expense. 
Ok, so, cinquième question, fifth question. D'après les sites internet de l'occasion, les difficultés à se loger ont se trouvées. Elles ne sont pas nouvelles. I told you that I remember this one. And look, it's here. Existait déjà avant leur arrivée. Les sites internet de location saisonnière protestent que le problème existait déjà avant. Leur arrivée existait means to exist. So, the correct answer is... Is vrai. Because it's not a new news that um, accommodation problem. Uh, yes, accommodation problem is not a new thing actually. Okay, so sixth question. Les habitants des centres villes regrettent. Regrettent is a key word. And uh, we already know that word actually. And if you didn't, uh, write it on your word book. And, um, okay, so I will give you some more words if you want to better understand this question. L'absence de solidarité des voisins. Absence means the lack of. Solidarité, solidarity. Voisin means neighbor. Uh, le manque d'éducation des touristes. So, the, le manque is the lack of two. Disparition, the disappearance, the loss, the vanishing. Uh, des, des commerces de proximité. Okay, so... Here's what we read on the article. Les rues perdent peu à peu leurs magasins de quartier. Fini les boutiques d'autrefois. Adieu les voisins qu'on connaît bien. Okay, so we have fini, we have adieu. Adieu is actually stronger than au revoir. When you say adieu, you mean that you will never see the, that person again. And so here the, the correct answer is because we're talking about the vanishing of, uh, of a small shop. And let's do the last question. En séjournant dans les centres des touristes ont accès à une visite quartier traditionnelle. Avoir accès, to get access. But in the, in the article context, it means more like the experience, you know, the tourist like experience, uh, the, the way of life of traditional uh, traditional city. Okay, but uh, we already saw it on the sixth question. The, the street gets emptied from local traditional shops. And uh, to be sure, look what they say. Les rues se remplissent de restaurants chic. You know, you know it's... Uh, yeah. What can we say? Chic. Restaurant chic. De boutiques de, de souvenirs, de valises à roulettes. So actually, it's a modern life, actually, with tourists, etc. So... They don't have access to a traditional way of life. So here it's four. And we are done. And the second part, la deuxième épreuve, est terminée. Yes, it's that simple. Normally, you get the maximum points uh, from this part, from all the exercise. And as you noticed, it's all about words, expression, and their synonyms. So my advice is that you have to start to build your own dictionary. Write down all the new words that you learn and try to make sentences with them. Try to memorize them. And the best way to learn new words is to read. That's why we built our course and our books with words that are the most frequently uh, used in the French language. Indeed, to build the story of season one on this book, we use the most important words that we use in everyday language and also the words that are the most used in deaf exam. Actually, yes, we did a statistic job with words. In season one, we teach you all the fundamentals of the French language. And in season two, we will um, we'll raise the level to the top. Keep following us. Many surprises will come very soon. And by the way, uh, we still not finish the Bay One exam. We still have the third part to do, la production écrite. And um, since it won't be any break during the exam, let's start up. Okay, so let's start the third part right now. And the lesson has finished. Next video will be about the Delft B1 writing exam. You can come to our website and continue to work French with us. I'll be there and you can contact us and we will be glad to help you to get better in French. 
Also, we have many more Delft B1 exams that you can download on our website www.frenchwithlove.com You can visit our website and get access to all of them. For your questions, you can always contact us. Till next lesson, stay with love.